massive arachnids, scorpions, ants, centipedes the size of a child, and giant fleas that could suck liters of blood from sleeping dinosaurs. Seeing all these prehistoric monsters that once dominated the world could give you nightmares. In this video, we will go back in time to discover the largest and scariest prehistoric insects that ever existed. Arthropleura A millipede-like creature known as an Arthropleura looked a lot like the centipedes of today but just three feet longer. With their flat, long bodies, Arthropleura scuttled around on rainforest floors like giant armored carpets. The fossils found in Nova Scotia, Canada, and the United States suggest the ancient millipede could easily rival an adult human. The size of this giant is estimated to be 22 inches in width from 6 feet 3 inches to 8 feet 7 inches in length and a body mass of around 110 pounds. The species of the genus are the biggest known land invertebrates of all time, but despite its fearsome size and large mandibles, it was a herbivore and only fed on decaying vegetation on forest floors. Arthropleura went extinct about 300 million years ago after the collapse of the Carboniferous rainforests. However, large-sized specimens of Arthropleura are described from the Serpicovian stage during which the oxygen pressure was only a bit higher than modern Earth at around 23%, suggesting that high oxygen pressure may not have been a primary reason for its gigantism. Megarachne Discovered in 1980, Megarachne was an extinct genus of sea scorpions that lived about 300 million years ago. It could grow up to two feet long with eight limbs that it used to sweep food into its mouth. This species possessed blade-like structures on its limbs which would have allowed it to use a feeding method known as sweep feeding, raking through soft sediment of aquatic environments in swamps and rivers with its frontal appendage blades to grab and eat small invertebrates. Megarachne also possessed a large and circular rounded dorsal abdominal segment, the function of which remains unknown. During Megarachne's time, Argentina and the rest of South America were part of the ancient supercontinent Gondwana, which was beginning to fuse with the northern continents of Euramerica, North China, Siberia, and Kazakhstan to form a Pangaea. Megarachne was originally identified as an extinct genus of spiders, which would have made it the largest known species of terrestrial spider. However, further research showed that it was actually a kind of water-dwelling arthropod. Either way, imagining a two-foot-wide sea spider with bladed limbs is sure to give you nightmares. Pseudopulex Prehistoric fleas first appeared on Earth during the time of the dinosaurs over 165 million years ago. These ancient fleas were quite different from the ones that we know today. Unlike today's fleas, which often target dogs, cats, and humans, they fed on the blood of dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals that inhabited the Earth during that time. One remarkable example of these ancient flea-like creatures is Pseudopulex, a group of arthropod parasites that compensated for their restricted jumping ability with, well, pretty much everything else. They were huge, about 50 times bigger than the average dog flea, and flat-bodied, which was ideal for hanging on to their gigantic food sources. They also had long claws that made it easier for them to grab onto a sleeping dinosaur and find a spot between its protective scales or plates. Once they were ready, they could use their primary weapon, a powerful, robust, and very sharp mouth which could easily pierce through the thick skin of dinosaurs. Due to their similarities, it's tempting to classify Pseudopulex as the ancestors of modern-day fleas. However, they do exhibit some traits that are completely different from modern fleas, which may be an indication of this genus possibly having an early evolution that resulted in a dead-end lineage. They show major differences in body morphology and size due to the large differences in their prey, such as more flattened bodies and longer claws. According to experts, these ancient parasites underwent a remarkably similar evolutionary process and were in fact a distinct insect group that perished along with their favorite prey. Jackalopterus Although not technically an insect, Jackalopterus is the largest known arthropod to have ever existed. This was determined in 2007 when Marcus Poshman unearthed a fossilized claw from this massive specimen in a German quarry. 
The claw measured 18 inches, and from this measurement, scientists were able to estimate the size of these species, which could have reached an astonishing 8 feet in length. If you think modern scorpions are bad, just imagine an ancient scorpion as long as a surfboard with claws the size of your head. Scientists believe that this creature was a highly efficient apex predator that hunted using its large claws and excellent eyesight. However, aside from the robust and heavily sclerotized claws, most of the preserved large body segments are thin and unmineralized. Even the plates that form the surfaces of the abdominal segments are generally preserved as paper-thin compressions, suggesting that Jackalopterus were very lightweight in construction. Similar lightweight adaptations can be observed in other Paleozoic giant arthropods, such as the giant millipede-like Arthropleura that we discussed earlier. And this is believed to be vital for the evolution of giant arthropod sizes because lightweight build decreases the influence of factors that restrict body size. Now, this creature was a cannibal and it would have fed on other marine animals. It is thought that this creature would have been at the top of the underwater food chain due to its size and predatory behavior. The Titanomama Ant Ants have captured the attention of scientists for centuries, and their study, known as myrmecology, continues to unravel their mysteries. One good example is the bullet ant, whose bite packs an extremely painful punch for something that only grows about an inch long. So now picture an ant ten times the size. It's not hard to understand why Bruce Archibald, the paleoentomologist who first discovered the Titanomama ant in the Green River Formation, a fossil bed in Wyoming, called the nearly 50 million year old insect monstrously big, almost as big as today's goldfinch. It is the largest known species of an ant in the world. The fossil of Titanomama, the first of the genus to be discovered, are very well preserved. They show that the species did not possess a sting and did not have a closing mechanism on the crop. It is believed that it must have sprayed formic acid as a defense, and it probably either ate fresh food like leafcutter ants, which only eat the mushrooms they grow in their nests, or was carnivorous. Modern relatives include driver ants, so the Titanomama may have been a precursor species, possibly following a raiding lifestyle and butchering large animals. Unfortunately, we don't know that much about the ant aside from the fact that it had wings. Its characteristics and lifestyle still remain a mystery. However, paleontologists believe it probably came from Europe to America using a land bridge in the Arctic when the Earth was getting warmer. Meganeura the largest prehistoric insect ever discovered among a myriad of massive bugs is a dragonfly-like creature initially found by scientists in the late 1930s. With a reconstructed wing length of 13 inches, an estimated wingspan of up to 28 inches, and a body length from head to tail of almost 17 inches, this prehistoric giant could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a small child. Meganeura had several features suggesting a highly predacious lifestyle. Among these were a pair of toothed and powerful mandibles for tackling large, struggling prey. Its front limbs were very spiny, and it had a series of appendages, the purpose of which remains a mystery. Some experts think they might have been used for hunting, mating, anchoring, or laying eggs. They possibly were very maneuverable in the air, just as their living relatives today. They likely lived close to streams, ponds, or other water places. Fossils show that they were among the most fearsome insects of their time and that they probably ate large amounts of prehistoric frogs, squirrels, and other high-protein food to satisfy their enormous appetite. Meganeura died out at the end of the Permian period due to the mass extinction that wipes out more than 90% of all life on Earth. With this extinction, the high oxygen levels were gone and no insect would ever reach their size. But why were all these animals so gigantic hundreds of millions of years ago? Fossil records suggest that insects emerged around 407 to 396 million years ago, with the earliest example being the Rhyniognatha species. Now, it's believed their growth was supported by higher planetary temperatures that increased animal metabolism. Some theories also suggest that since 350 million years ago, the oxygen levels were about 50% higher than they are today, and so the evolutionary growth spurt was to avoid oxygen poisoning. Insects, for example, had a diffusion-limited respiratory system that allowed them to get enough oxygen to support their larger size. 
This enabled oxygen to reach even the deepest parts of their bodies even when they were several feet long. At some point, though, the atmospheric carbon dioxide levels began decreasing significantly, causing the average global temperature to drop from 68 degrees Fahrenheit to around 53 degrees Fahrenheit. This resulted in forests receding to isolated patches and smaller insects became better equipped to function in a hypoxic environment, eventually leading to the minor extinction of most of the larger giants of the Carboniferous. Recently, there was a new study that focused on how varying oxygen levels affect stonefly larvae, which, like dragonflies, live in water before becoming terrestrial adults. Higher concentrations of oxygen in the air would have meant higher concentrations dissolved in water. The results showed that juvenile stoneflies are more sensitive to oxygen fluctuations than their adult counterparts living on land. This may be because insect larvae typically absorb oxygen directly through their skin, so they have little to no control over exactly how much of the gas they take in. By contrast, adult insects can regulate their oxygen intake by opening or closing valve-like holes in their bodies called spiracles. While crucial for life, oxygen can be poisonous in large quantities. Humans exposed to excess oxygen can suffer cell damage leading to vision problems, difficulty breathing, nausea, and convulsions. It's likely the larvae of many ancient insects also passively absorbed oxygen from water and were not able to regulate their oxygen intake very well. And so the only way to decrease the risk of oxygen toxicity would have been to grow bigger since large larvae would absorb lower percentages of the gas relative to their body sizes than small larvae. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments section below. See you tomorrow.